Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar, How to Deal with Resistance to Change. My name is Alexandra Chofi, Director of Marketing for Operations Strategy Consulting. Have you heard statements like these before? Change would be easy if it weren't for all the people. Unless things change, they will stay the same. Change is seldom easy. Or maybe you've said them. There is an underlying truth that if change is not managed well, we end up with a big mess on our hands. If we are going to continue to improve and grow our businesses, we have to get our people on board with the changes. In this webinar, you will learn how to get people on board with you instead of against you. Presenting today's webinar will be Megan Burns, Founder and Managing Director of Operations Strategy. She has more than 15 years of industrial engineering and supply chain management experience. She has spoken at industry conferences and her articles have appeared in both regional and national publications. A certified Six Sigma Master Black Belt, Megan has worked with companies throughout North America and in 14 different countries. Before we get started, we would like you to know that there will be a question and answer session at the end of the presentation, and you can submit your questions at any time in the box on the bottom corner of your screen. Without further ado, I will now turn it over to Megan. Thank you, Alexandra. Well, as Alexandra said in the intro, there's a lot of conflicting thoughts about change and the thought that people just don't like change. But as we'll find as we go throughout this webinar, that's not really the case. It's not that people are opposed to change. What they resist is actually being changed, having the change forced on them. In fact, the best way to get someone to dig in their heels against you is to give them an arbitrary mandate to change. So if you want to get cooperation with your change initiative, it's critical to involve those people in every step of your change effort. One of the ways to do that is to get agreement. The best way to get people on board and to not resist is to make sure that they understand why the change is happening how the change affects them and how they can help contribute towards the change. The problem is it takes a lot of time and effort to achieve that and many organizations fail because they don't invest the time that's necessary to build that agreement within the organization. And the downside is you run into a lot of resistance both in your face and underground resistance if we don't take these efforts. So the bottom line is investing that time up front and those resources to get agreement on your change initiative is going to pay huge dev dividends in the results you see from your prog project. If you've studied at all human behavior or psychology you may recognize this chart that we have and this is uh, the typical chart in adapting to new products or changes. Uh, and think about this. Think about some important changes like cell phones and technology. Typically, the majority of the population are somewhere in the middle, in that 80 to 90 percent. They kind of wait and see what's happening and then adapt to it. You have your early adopters, the people who are sitting out waiting for the latest iPhone, uh, and then you have the, the other 5 percent who are saying, I'm never getting a f smartphone, I'm never going to learn how to text. Um, so they're really the extremes. And let's admit, Resistance is not necessarily a bad thing. It's not something that we have to go out and kill and, and beat into submission. Um, what's important is to recognize the manifestation of resistance and how to manage it. In fact, the way you react to the resistance that you encounter can either increase or decrease the resistance. And it's important to note the resistance is not only about emotions. There's a fallacy that people think, believe the only reason people are resisting is because um, they don't like it or uh, they're upset about something. 
there really are different types of resistance. Uh, and as we will see that sometimes resistance is because someone just wants more information or they want to be more involved. Okay. And one of the downsides to not dealing with resistance effectively is you could potentially lose some very powerful expertise if you don't deal with it uh, well. So resistance as a change leader should be viewed as information. It gives you insight into how people are thinking and feeling about the change that you're proposing. So if not dealt with correctly, resistance can be quite counterproductive. So that's why we're here to talk about how we can deal with it and why we need to pay attention to it. Now as I mentioned, resistance comes in a couple different shapes and forms. And if, again, if you've done any background or study in psychology and human behavior, you may recall that there are four different types of resistance. And let's just say resistance is a very normal reaction because we are all creatures of habit. In fact, I'm going to challenge you right now as you're sitting in the webinar uh, to cross your arms. Okay, so cross your arms. You have a natural way to cross them. Now, try to cross them the other way. How many of you can do it easily? Okay, this is a simple task, so just changing how you cross your arms. And you probably had to pause and think about it. Now imagine that we're talking about changing how you do your day-to-day -day activities or your job or something you've been doing for years and years and you can understand how there could be some resistance because there are things that we're just comfortable with because we are creatures of habit. Now as I mentioned there are four different types of resistance that you're going to encounter. They are cognitive, which is uh, right side of the brain, content-based resistance. There is ideological, which more more of a values-based resistance. There is psychological, which is the left side of the brain, your emotional resistance, the one we most often think about. And then there's also power-driven resistance, which is usually uh, politically inspired. Now, as you go through a change initiative or a project's life cycle, these types of resistance will ebb and flow. The key is for you to be able to identify them and understand how to react to them properly so that you can diffuse the situation um, and have the most successful project possible. So let's start into how do you identify what type of resistance you're dealing with. The first type of resistance that we're going to talk about is cognitive resistance. And this is, again, this is orients in the brain and this is someone who is based on information. Uh, based on their information, their experience, they think that whatever you're proposing is misguided. And, you know, they, they, the good thing is this is probably the easiest type of resistance to deal with. And the funny thing is people who are resisting cognitively don't see themselves as resistors. Uh, they kind of view it as, well, I'm right and you're wrong, so you need to be the one who, who should change. And they can fight very passionately with very rational arguments. The key is you can detect this because they are content-based resistance. Okay? They will attack and try to destroy your diagnosis or your action plan because they will engage you in debates and engage you in debates and engage you in debates. They're very persistent. Um, and depending on your credibility, as they see it, uh, may be very forthright with you. Uh, they, these are not subtle resistors. They're very direct. They have a different experience and so in their viewpoint your approach and your experience just doesn't make sense to them. Okay. So this is how you can recognize when you're 
encountering this type of resistance. The question is, how do you address it? The first thing, really listen. Listen to their argument, not just what they're saying, but also their nonverbal cues. Uh, listen to their arguments, listen to their data, try to incorporate some of their points because, hey, they might be right. Uh, find a value that you can in getting additional information so you can make your diagnosis or your course of action more accurate. You may actually end up with a, a different solution, um, but get them involved. Look for how can you broaden support for your analysis. Get into these discussions and debates. Let them educate you. Share your diagnosis with them. Keep it objective though. Stick to the data and the facts. Show them your rationale. Show them how you gathered your, your data, um, your analysis. Use credible people. Who do they, who do they respect? both internally or externally? Is there benchmarking data for the market or the industry that you could use to provide further input and gain credibility for your diagnosis? Uh, if your resistors are in senior or executive management above you, help them understand what it is that needs to be changed, both organizationally and individually and then help them understand what the organization should become and the benefit of that. Uh, be willing to accept small commitments from them. Uh, trying out a pilot project or um, you know, testing it out in a small area to be able to prove out the solution. The worst thing that you can possibly do to these resistors is to isolate them because what they're going to do is contaminate the rest of the organization. Um, if you've gone through all of the steps, got them involved in ga gathering the data, get them involved in analyzing it, use benchmarking, and they're still resisting, at that point, sometimes you really do need to remove them. Uh, but that usually is a, is a last ditch effort. Okay, but the bottom line when you're dealing with cognitive resistance is show the rationale. It's logical resistance. Now, the next type of resistance is ideological res resistance. If cognitive was the easiest type of resistance to deal with, ideological is by far the most difficult. And the reason being is their resistance originates from the heart, the values. And you can identify this because they really see your change as a violation of their values. It's a moral dilemma for them. They can be very nostalgic about the past successes of their organization. Um, you often find these types of resistors in senior and middle management who have been there for a very long time, for decades. Uh, and depending on the organization, they can be quite pervasive throughout the organization. And they will try to suffocate your change initiative through delays, uh, inertia, moral advocacy. They will challenge your legitimacy as a change leader. Um, they'll challenge the whole change initiative. Uh, and they usually come out and are at their peak as soon as the vision or the structure of your project or initiative becomes public. Now, as I said, this is the most difficult type of resistance to deal with because it is rooted with an individual's personal values and beliefs. Uh, so it's going to take a lot of effort on your part to be able to address this type of resistance and recognize that you may not always be able to win these individuals over. So how do you deal with them? The first thing do not 
start a discussion with them like, let me explain. Because let's face it, we cannot argue about values. Okay. What you can do is try to um, reformulate your change initiative or your project and link it back to historical values and, and emphasize the part of the culture that's going to be retained and how it fits the new direction. De-emphasize those aspects of um, the main parts of the change, but put the emphasis on how we're still capitalizing on what made us great to begin with. Um, Again, don't try to argue about values. You can show data, but you cannot use power to try to address this. You will find yourself in endless discussions. Um, so again, try, go back to anchoring. And this is where you're really going to have to use those leadership skills that you have. Um, and make it very positive, engaging, uplifting. Uh, if you have leadership skills in how can you paint that vision, those symbolic skills, um, that's what you really want to tap into. But be prepared that depending on where the organization is going as a whole, um, Sometimes decisions need to be made whether this person can fit with the organization or not. Uh, and typically, you may find that individuals will recognize themselves that it may not be a fit for them. Um, but again, don't just look at the behavior. You have to look behind the resistance to really understand the motivation for that. Um, and really understand what is their hot button issue. And it may be that they perceive something that is truly not the case. Here's an example. Um, I had a situation with a, a team member once when I was working in industry and we were automating a process. And I ran into a great deal of resistance because this individual started in their job straight out of high school had learned the job from their dad and saw the automation as a threat to what made the organization great and why it was a wonderful place to work. And so what we had to do is talk about that we're not trying to eliminate people and that we're not trying to uh, streamline it in that regards, but the reason why the um, the organization was a great place to work for and um, what made it great was we were always capitalizing on technological advances that we were giving people an opportunity to develop new skills and to uh, better themselves and learn different pieces of equipment and make themselves more valuable to the organization and, and so that's an example of how when you get to what is really at the heart of what they're resisting, how you can sometimes reframe a situation uh, for them so they can see you're not attacking them, you're just trying to build on what has already gone before you. Now, the next type of resistance we're going to talk about is psychological resistance. Now, psychological resistors are individuals that are very hesitant to try new things. Um, they are really attached to the status quo. This is our emotional resistor. Uh, they, there may be some mistrust with the change leader. They focus on the cost of the change initiative much more than they do the benefits. And quite honestly, their confidence concerning their ability to actually implement the change in initiative is usually pretty low. And as a result, they have this personal insecurity that's related to that change initiative. It may be related to job security or their morale. Uh, and, and so they may even want to deny that the change is actually going to happen. Huh. And you can tell this because these are your the sky is falling people. 
They can tell you every reason why the change will not work, why there's a problem with it. Um, they're going to exaggerate the difficulties. Uh, but they won't come out and directly tell you that they're not supportive of the change. They're very passive in their resistance. Uh, and the good thing is that these individuals can help you see situations or pitfalls that you might not have seen or recognize as you were going through your analysis. Um, and that can be very beneficial to have them on your side. However, because they're very passive, they can start spreading rumors and they can very easily sink a change initiative. So how do you deal with this? Well, imagine or think back uh, to a child who doesn't want to go to bed okay, because they're afraid of the dark. How do you deal with that? Well, you listen to them. It's all about having empathy for the individual. It's not that these individuals are less competent. Uh, however, their tolerance, their, their ability to deal with risk is very low. And it's very important to deal with this type of resistance appropriately because they usually are very emotional. Uh, and so they may check out if we don't deal with it appropriately. You really need to take on the role of a coach to deal with them. They need supported. They need you to kind of walk along with them and baby step them through the change initiative. Don't think leave that don't leave them alone on the sides uh, to just imagine what could possibly go wrong with this. Uh, get them involved. Get them to participate in the analysis. Uh, what that does is give them more of a sense of control of the situation and therefore it lowers their fear quite honestly. Um, over commute. You cannot over communicate with these individuals. Explain, demonstrate, provide feedback. Uh, we talked before about launching pilot projects. That is very important when we're dealing with psychological resistance. Um, you know, think of how you can possibly celebrate those little milestones and those early successes. Ask them to provide uh, feedback and, and ideas for that. The bottom line is when we're dealing with psychological resistance, it is fear based. And so sometimes we need to highlight what is the cost of not changing. We don't often think about that. That could be a more risky alternative. But don't be arrogant when you're dealing with your psychological resistors. Okay? Sometimes you do need to increase the perceived risk of the status quo. Uh, it's that whole concept of, you know, things will stay the same until the pain of say, staying the same is greater than the pain of change. Help them see what that risk is of staying the same. Provide a vision for them. Make sure that you reference to them what's in it for them. How does this make life easier, better? Um, give them role models. Uh, you yourself, as the change leader, should be a role model for them. You know, really walk that talk and show them that they can do this. Recognize them, celebrate them, coach them through this, and you will have success. What happens if we do not deal with psychological resistance appropriately is it can morph. Let's go back to that illustration of the child that does not want to go to bed because they're scared of the dark. If you just come out and dictate them to them, listen, it is bedtime. I don't want to hear any griping and complaining. You need to go to bed right now. That psychological resistance morphs into power driven resistance. That tiny little three or four year old child will grow a spine made of steel that you can't imagine you're battling against this small child. Um, but the same thing happens in our organizations. Even though we get taller 
and, and bigger, we still have that resistance of not wanting to be dictated to. And it comes back to this control issue and this perception that the change is causing to a loss of control. Uh, now, some people may just hit power driven resistance head on. They are not your psychological resistors. But the root of it is a loss of control, loss of authority in how the individual controls the end results. Okay. Uh, it could be reduced status. Uh, it could now these individuals can be misinterpreted as cognitive or ideological resistors. They are most often in management or executive ranks. They can be overcompliant. They can be passive aggressive, pretending that they're going along with your change initiative. All along, they have plans in place to take over your change program because they're going to propose a more effective strategy, according to them. Um, and, and try and minimize your change initiative into irrelevancy. Uh, so you want to make sure that they get involved during the implementation of the action plan. Um, recognize when you're doing your change initiative who your stakeholders are. Um, your power driven resistors will try to delay. They will use all kinds of delay tactics with you. They will agree with your goal, but maybe they'll challenge you on the pace or the timing of the change. Or have you ever ran, ran into this where they request for greater specificity on what you're doing and how you're going to do that? And can you give me a report on that in more detail? They may not even be conscious of the fact that they're resisting you. Okay, uh, You can even re run into it in a, a meeting. If someone is facilitating the meeting and they want to start and they want to keep control and someone else starts making suggestions, you can find yourself in a power driven resistance mode. Uh, but it's, it's usually politically motivated. So with that being said, how do we deal with it? Well, build support. Since these individuals are typically in the management and executive ranks, uh, who else in senior executive team is supportive of your change initiative? Get them to participate. Uh, maybe get the resistor to co-lead the project with you. Um, negotiate. Negotiation is a key leadership skill, uh, especially when you're dealing with political issues like this. How can you bargain with them? Um, how can you agree to some compromises in one area to gain their support in another? Um, getting champions. Who do they respect that influences them that you can get on board with your change initiative? Uh, use surveys or focus groups to make them aware and build your case. Uh, the bottom line is when we're dealing with power driven resistance, unless they report directly to you, you cannot address this type of change yourself. You need to find allies. Okay? And it's all about the power map. So when you do your stakeholder analysis, do your power map and understand who influences whom and who you need to have as your allies. Uh, it comes down to influence. Okay. And look at also pulling in high potentials or juniors that could potentially be given key roles within the new organization. That could influence some effort and in um, effect on your power driven resistors. Um, if you use these strategies effectively, then you should be able to address this particular type of resistance. So just to recap, here is our pyramid of resistance. And if you see, the bottom of the base is 
what you're going to run into most often cognitive resistance and you can tell when you have cognitive resistance because this is someone who says I don't know they're lacking the necessary information the next layer out up are your psychological resistors and they're the individual saying I'm not able I don't know that I can do this I'm not sure this is a good idea and what they are lacking what you need to provide is training or perhaps coaching or maybe you as the change leader have not planned this individual's part of the implementation effectively so how can you come alongside them to gain their support the top of the pyramid are the individuals that you're going to run into not quite as often but again are probably the most challenging ones to deal with and these are your power driven and ideological resistors these are the individuals who say I don't want to they are saying that yes I am perfectly capable of doing it I fully understand and know how to do it but I'm just not going to do it in this case this is where you have to dig back and understand why the person is resisting use those leadership skills use your power map and your influence to be able to address this particular type of resistance now the best way to deal with resistance is to avoid it can you avoid it completely mm -hmm that might be a stretch however the best way to minimize resistance is to communicate communicate early communicate often uh, communicate over communicate uh, the more you communicate the earlier the more frequently you communicate to all the stakeholders the greater chance you have of them supporting your proposed change initiative or your project okay. so it's very important to explain the situation make your stakeholders feel like their contributions are important encourage them to work on teams encourage them to exchange ideas emphasize those benefits and potential payoffs of the implementation um, talk about the cost of not doing anything really be a good listener okay people who have been doing their jobs for any length of time are worth being listened to and understood and make sure that you share the credit with everyone um, by doing that you are going to minimize the resistance significantly um, as compared to just coming out announcing a change and expecting everyone to adopt it so those are the key factors to why you should care about resistance how to recognize resistance some strategies to deal with it and the best way to um, possibly avoid resistance so at this point we're going to open it up for some questions see what you have to say and um, see how we can drive this home for you